Number two, same two functions. This time around, we are not going to find a function value, but we are finding a function. Okay, it's very important that you differentiate between example one and example two. Example one, they gave you an input, you had to find the output. They gave you input, you found the function value. In example two, they have given you two functions and they're gonna ask you to find a function, okay? Let me add the instructions for you, give me a second. All right, everybody, everybody this is, um, these are the instructions. Find each function and state its domain. All right, here we go. The first function I'm gonna have us, to have us find is the sum function f plus g at x, okay? Basically, I'm asking you to operate on these two given functions, f and g. You know what f is, it's 3x minus seven. You know what g is, it's x squared plus two x. So then what is, or what do you get when you take those two functions and add them together? Now, I hope that you find this really, really straightforward. Uh, when I take f, 3x minus seven, and I add that to x squared plus 2x, it basically looks like that. I'm just adding these two functions together, and it kind of just looks like you adding um, uh, algebraic expressions together, and that's really what it boils down to. And you know that you can only add like terms. I'm gonna underline the like terms for us. You can probably see them. 3x and 2x are your only like terms. So those are the only two terms that you can combine. So then the sum function would be x squared uh, plus 5x, that's 3x plus 2x, 5x, and then you have a minus seven. So this is the sum function. This is the function that you get when you take f and g and add them together. Now, as far as its domain is concerned, uh, what kind of function is f plus g? What kind of function did we get? You can see it's x squared plus 5x minus 7. It's a quadratic function. I'm going to put capital D for domain, if you don't mind, instead of, instead of writing out the word domain, D for domain. We studied quadratic functions extensively, I believe, in chapter 1 in our course. And we learned back in chapter 1 that all quadratic functions have a domain of all real numbers. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. Back in chapter one, we said that these parabolas um, branch out indefinitely uh, to the left and to the right. They forever get wider and wider and wider, so the domain is all real numbers. Um, I can also explain it this way. Any real number input will produce a real number output, so the domain is all real numbers. Great, you found a function, okay? Now, don't do anything else uh, with this. That, that's all they asked you to do is to find a function. Okay, let's find uh, another function, okay? Let me see if I can move this whole page up a little bit. All right, the next function I want you to find, um, now let me let me set the stage uh, one more, once more for you. Uh, give me a second. Okay, dealing with the same two functions here, this time around, um, I want you to find the difference function, f minus g at x, find this function. You're gonna have to be extra careful with this difference function, um, so let me play this out for us. Uh, so here is f, um, it's three x minus seven, and what we need to do is subtract from this function, function g. So let me see if I can show you. What we want to do is minus or subtract g of x, which is x squared plus 2x. Please notice, please notice my use of parentheses here. Uh, the parentheses here are really important because it will hopefully encourage you to distribute that subtraction sign and then add the opposite. So this turns out to be, uh, removing the parentheses, 3x minus 7, and then minus x squared minus 2x, okay? Again, notice your like terms are 3x and negative 2x. So your final answer here is negative x squared uh, plus 1x minus 
7. This is, again, a quadratic function. Um, this is the difference function. This is what you get when you subtract g of x from f of x. Because it's a quadratic function, the domain, again, is all real numbers. Okay? Okay, guys. Um, let's continue working. Um, the same two functions, f and g. You're probably really familiar with f and g by now. I had you operate on the two, these two functions. I've, I, in the first one, I had you add them, and then I just finished asking you to subtract one from the other. You can probably feel what's coming down the pike now. I want you to multiply them together. In other words, I want you to find this product function. Why don't you pause the video, and I challenge, challenge you to find this product function on your own. Again, I'll check back in with you in just a second. All right, everybody, I hope you did pretty well. Let me see if I can show you um, how this looks. So we're going to take function f and multiply it by function g. All right, so function f, remember, is 3x minus 7. And function g is x squared plus 2x. Um, some of you are familiar with multiplying two binomials. You even say, um, let's FOIL this out. You know, you FOIL. Um, if you've never heard of uh, the word FOIL, don't even worry about it. It does stand for first, outer, inner, and last. It just tells you how to uh, distribute uh, when you multiply a binomial by another binomial. I'll actually show you um, how we are distributing. So first we're going to do 3x times x squared. That'll give us um, 3x cubed. And then also 3x times 2x will give us 6x squared. And then now let's distribute negative 7 into the binomial. So negative 7 times x squared and negative 7 times 2x like that. So then we will get negative 7 times x squared is negative 7x squared. And then negative 7 times 2x will be negative 14x. Very good. All right, combining like terms, um, hopefully this feels really natural for you. You can see that these two are your like terms, and so those are the only two terms you can combine to give you your final answer of 3x cubed uh, minus x squared, excuse me, uh, minus 14x. All right, this is the product function. Now, um, this is what we got when we multiplied the functions together. What about its domain? Now, uh, we graphed this polynomial function, or this kind of uh, function, a polynomial function, uh, in chapter 2. And we studied polynomial functions. We saw that their graphs are these smooth curves that go forever to the left and forever to the right. You can look back over your notes over um, what we talked about in chapter 2. Uh, with n behavior. And so this graph will go forever to the left eventually and forever to the right eventually. In other words, any real number input will produce a real number output. I'm trying to convince you that your domain is all real numbers. If you have a polynomial function, your domain will be all real numbers. Okay, guys, I got one more example um, like this for you. So hang tight. Okay, our two functions, um, again, f and g. This last time, I want you to find uh, this, this quotient function, f divided by g at x. All right? So you can see what we have to do is take our two functions and divide one by the other. You're actually dividing f by g. So you're going to have um, f of x in the numerator, and you will have uh, g of x in the denominator okay now um, you're basically done unless this function can be simplified further now this function can be simplified um, only if there's a common factor between the numerator and denominator um, but unfortunately the or I guess it's unfortunate I don't know the numerator is uh, prime 3x minus 7 does not factor and the denominator, x squared plus 2x, it does factor. It factors uh, with an x. Um, I can show you the common factor is x, and if you factor that out, you get x. 
uh, times x plus 2. But even in its factored form, this denominator does not share a common factor with the numerator. So we were actually done. Uh, you can write the final function like that, or you could have you could have just written it as uh, 3x minus 7 over x squared plus 2x. Up to you how you want to write this. You, um, we, we tried to factor that denominator. I'll put the word or here. Either one of these is fine. Um, you, we factor the denominator um, only to see if there's a common factor that we can, between the numerator and denominator that we can divide out, and there's not. So this function, um, it is what it is. It's just 3x minus 7 over x squared plus 2x. Now, a word about its domain. The domain in the previous three have been all real numbers, but it's different here, okay? Um, so let me move this screen up a little bit here. Now, uh, for this function, f divided by g, we know that the, de the denominator cannot be 0. So let me write that out for us if I can. Hopefully not too uh, sloppy here. The denominator must not be equal to 0. And we know why, correct? If the denominator is 0, then the whole function is undefined. Now, the denominator is x squared plus 2x. But you know what? I'm going to take the factored form of the denominator better. So this denominator here must not be 0. That is to say, each of these factors must not be 0. That is to say, x must not be 0. And x plus 2, the other factor, must not be 0. If I continue solving uh, the second factor for x, what we're, you know, subtract 2 from both sides. And you can see then x must not be equal to negative 2. So notice these two uh, statements here. x cannot be 0 and x cannot be negative 2. If x is 0 or if x is negative 2, that is to say if you plug in 0 or if you plug in negative 2 for x into this function that you just found, then this whole function will be undefined. So the domain in, in words will be any real number except negative 2 or 0. Any real number except negative 2 and 0. That is, negative 2 and 0 must be excluded from the domain. In interval notation, oops, excuse me. In interval notation, that would be from negative infinity to negative 2, union from negative 2 uh, to 0, uh, union from 0 to positive infinity. I know that's kind of long, but that's basically our way of saying any real number except negative 2 or 0 in interval, interval notation.